had to do here. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Uh, he, he was adopted by my family. He's, uh, he's from Sweden. <laughs> That's why he still has a, an accent. Because, well, no, because he was adopted when he was older, not because he, that didn't make sense. But uh, do you want to talk about that? Or? Yeah, I don't have a great accent because I can say almost everything because I've been here for a while. But it's just certain words I still can't say. Like, I can't say clothes, like the stuff I'm wearing. And I don't know why, it's because it's an easy word. You should be, I, I should be able to say that now, but I can't say it. And so I'm fine in most situations, but there's a certain, certain situation where I can't, like, if I go to the mall and they ask me, oh, you want some help? And I say, yeah, I want to buy some clothes. It gets weird, because we can't say an easy word like that. It's awkward, because, and I look white and all, so they don't assume I'm foreign. They assume I'm a retard. I don't know if I'm really high for bombing, but um, anyways, yeah, it's not nothing is as smooth as when you try to boo a lady and you say, "Take off your clothes." This, this fucking lead. I think uh, words are important. The way we use them, <laughs> like, I don't know, like instead of saying. Uh, Pass me that pen. It's a lot nicer to say, will you please pass me that pen? Or instead of saying, can I get your number? You could just as easily say, may I squeeze your titties? Let's <laughs> talk about wooing the ladies. Uh, I, was, I was out of, uh, at a McDonald's bathroom today, and as I walked in, there's a cute girl in the uh, walking in the next in the ladies' bathroom. You know, the single person ones like that. So. Uh, like 15 minutes later, I come out, and she came out at the exact same time. So I was thinking, wow, this is a, you know, a sign from God, or someone thing, to, to say something. So smooth as butter, I, I said, I went up to her and I said, huh, I, I take long shits too. <laughs> you, we both have that in common. <laughs> so... But how come uh, girls spend so much time putting in scent and conditioner and spraying on expensive perfume? But then they freak out when I try to sniff their hair on the subway. <laughs> Women, huh? <laughs> and I should say, growing up in a, in a Jewish family is not <laughs> always great when you look this and you're not see. You know, you get, you get a lot of strange looks at the uh, synagogue. I'll say that. And there was not a lot of people showing up for my for my bar mitzvah. It's pretty empty. A lot of a lot of food left weeks after. When he was talking about taking shits, I took his shit up there, and it was a line. In like it was one guy waiting, and after I came out, I when I before I like went out to the toilet, I couldn't decide which face I was gonna make to him. Because you have to make a face after you go out there. You can't just like say nothing and then he walks in and it fucking stinks. You gotta give him some warning, you know? Like, you know, you know, it gives somebody some warning, like, uh, sorry. Or, I don't know, just give, give a real anger face, like, oh, I was done with that. <laughs> Oh, I think, feel like half of these laughing in pity laughs, but I'll take them. I hope my ball sack has its own distinct smell. Because if it doesn't, then I just love the smell of ball sacks. And, uh, he's talking about uh, the, our Jewish family. Growing up in a Jewish family gave me a lot of respect for Anne Frank's story. Because we, we heard a lot of times growing up, right? <laughs> and like... <laughs> the simple fact that a Jewish girl is able to keep her mouth shut for more than two minutes is fucking incredible. Under any circumstance. <laughs> Seriously, ask Nazi boy over here. <laughs> and, uh, I know, he, I know uh, my brother... Uh, my big brother, well, my own brother. 
uh, he, he uh, hates the TTC. I do too. Like, on our way here, the but remember it was taking a long time to come. We were waiting for like an hour. Then finally when it showed up, we both, we, everyone actually stepped forward, only to see the sign switch from wherever is going to not in service. So I stepped back and I immediately looked to the woman next to me and I said, what a tease. But I didn't notice her daughter standing there, <laughs> sucking on her lollipop, twirling her pigtails. <laughs> so right away, mom grabs her kid aside, gives me a look of disgust. I tried to put her at ease, I said, relax, lady. If the city bus driver won't stop for her, nobody wants to fuck your kid. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna end on this. Because uh, we was talking about Nazis and stuff, and yeah, I guess I was too, and I was looking like one too. But, well, Hitler, like, I know it's gonna sound like I'm defending the guy, but with him, I think it's a very un... It's a very biased scale what you can call like a real Hitler. Like you can say that about somebody that's real like like resembling on Hitler, like at your job that's really angry all the time or like screams a lot and you say like, Oh yeah, that that guy's a real Hitler. Yeah, he's the he's the Hitler of the office. But you can't do that with anything else that Hitler was famous for. Like you know, he, he was famous for building really good roads. Like the roads in Germany are like outstanding. But if you say that about the infrastructure minister of Canada, like, yeah, he's a real Hitler. Really sick roads. It's taking the wrong way. I think it's uh, unfair. I know that's not what it was most famous for, but, you know, it's one of his personality traits. Well, that's our time. Thanks a lot. Eric and Josh. <laughs> Brothers, everybody. Oh my.